Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. Alabama is where I lay my head. Back with another video right here to show you guys, as promised, um, we're going to do some more work with our basket weave tool and understanding and knowing what the basket weave tool can do. So this is actually the second video that um, I've done right that with the basket weave. And today I'm going to go into detail with the arrowhead stamp. So, uh, or the stamping pattern. We're going to go right into detail with the arrowhead stamping pattern and show you guys how cool that this one stamp can actually be. So, Again, uh, I'll be using the X534 basket weave stamp. X534. And if you guys can see it, there it is right there. The X534. Let me give you a better, you may can see exactly. I wish it was a better way to do it, but it's not a real, very big tool. It's actually a little bit smaller than an inch. It's probably about maybe a half inch uh, in length. And maybe a, a eighth, an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter in uh, width. But we'll be using this stamp right here. Good God Almighty, let me clean these glasses while I'm talking to you. Um, and actually, this is a project that I'm working on, the minimalist wallet. And the, the reason why, because I, 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 I think that this pattern will work very well because with the border on, on this pattern, I already started the tribal art pattern or this design or stamping design on this minimalist wallet. Now, these ladies and gentlemen are very, very popular right now. Uh, basically, it's just big enough to hold your cards. Nobody is carrying wallets back like they did when I was young to where you either had the bifold, a trifold, or a checkbook wallet, which in the leather world we call long wallets, or biker wallets, or trucker wallets. Uh, originally, the proper name for them was called a banker's wallet, because that's what the bankers, before they came with bank bags and all this kind of stuff, the actual president of the bank used to carry all of the money in his wallet, and that's where they get the chain attachment to. So if you rob him, you have to actually break it off his pants or his belt or whatever. But anyway... The minimalist wallet are very popular right now. And it's not very long. Uh, maybe the length of a billfold. But to give you guys an idea, if you want to start making these, I'm going to go ahead and give you my measurements. And I use them at, I measure them at eight and a half long. Good God, that was hard to see. Eight and a half long and three and a half wide. So the width is three and a half inches and the length is eight and a half. And when you fold these, uh, this is just big enough to carry cards, just big enough to carry your cards. And these will come attached with a money clip. Um, pretty sort of much like this one that I messed up on. I'm going to have to redo it. Uh, and, and what I'm doing, you guys can see the arrowhead pattern here. So I'm going to go ahead and really tighten this one up. And the great part about minimalist wallets, you can attach as many pockets to these as you want. Um, or you can you can put the pockets wherever you want. So uh, with this one, if this one had a worked out, uh, it would have had an interior pocket here for such as like, you know, your, your major credit cards or your bank cards or business cards or whatever. And it had an exterior pocket here for like your driver's license and whatever. So if you needed to get to it quick, you can just boop, pull it out and nobody ever have to see. And these do come with a money clip attachment to them. And this is a spring money clip that was bought from Tandy. They actually had a clearance on these a couple of months ago and I bought just like a box of these things because they had them on clearance for like 39 cents. So you have to keep up with Tandy. I would suggest that you join Tandy's mailing list subscribe to tandy leather factory's mailing list or their uh e-commerce page and they'll send you emails every time that they have sales on now the e-com um side of tandy is completely different than actually going to the store what that means is is the sales that they have on the e-commerce is you won't find them in a store and the stores will not honor 
those sales that's on the e-commerce page. So you will strictly have to buy them online and those come from, uh, I, I guess, their distribution center or maybe the head company or wherever it comes from. But uh, I do know you can't go inside of a Tandy and say, hey, look, y'all had this sale online that y'all sent me an email and then the manager or whoever there is going to tell you, no, we can't give you that deal. You have to order strictly from online. So you heard it from me first, so save yourself that trip. But this is what I'm going to get off into making today. But um, I want to show you guys how to do the arrowhead pattern. And you can tell why I messed this up, where it really starts to get off. And once, that's the bad part about this arrowhead tooling pattern. That's the one major drawback to it is, it, well, in leather work, period. And in any leather crafting, you, if, if it's a oops, huh, or uh-oh, guess what it just became? A practice piece. So I thought that I might can get away with it because uh, if you are a crafter like me um, and several other crafters that I know, you know, uh, in the retail business, in the clothing industry, they call them irregulars or uh, and they're still sellable. They just can't sell them at that price. So you can go and buy Hanes T-shirts, tagless with the, uh, the the shrinking neck, and if it's an irregular, you could probably get it at half the cost as opposed to paying $11.99 for four t-shirts. You could only spend maybe about four or five bucks because it's irregular. Now, irregular, and some of you may know, I don't want to insult you guys' intelligence like you don't know what irregular is, but for those who do not know or aren't familiar, it may be something different in your area. But... Irregular uh, clothing is maybe uh, like in this shirt, the seam might have went a little crazy and you can't sell it because it's less than perfect. Or it could be that they hem the sleeve a little shorter than this one over here. So you can't sell that. And it happens in all forms of business. I know even for instance with Goodyear radials, uh, tires. Uh, sometimes the, the the stencil or might move on the, the template when it, where it says Goodyear on the tire. It might have moved. And if it moved, it's still a perfectly brand new tire. They just can't sell it under that brand. And it works the same way in Leather World. So I thought that I can save this and sell it to uh, at a cheaper price because it's a completed piece. You guys can see the pockets are already there. All I need to do is finish stitching it. But my drawback is, is that that particular customer don't know that it's an irregular. So unless I tell them, hey, look, you know, it had a little flaw right there. But if it don't bother you, it don't bother me. I'll sell it to you for 40 bucks or 45 bucks. Still got to get the cost of material and labor out of it. Even though uh, these minimalist wallets go anywhere from 65 to 85 dollars, depending on the detail and the work. So, but if you guys want to get off into doing these, you know, um, they're very, very good money makers. Uh, very good money makers, and you can do them. Uh, I think it takes about two days, depending on how much. Now, stamping the work, um, it didn't take that long, but I used a uh, resistant finish on here and I also I tried something new with a paste antique and just right off the break I'm not fond of paste antique no not a fan I'm going right back to gel antique it spreads better it doesn't cake up and I mean and it's the ugliest color I don't even know what color that turned out but somebody will buy it because they'll think that it's cool and it serves the purpose that they need and the minimalist wallets are very popular because not only is big enough to where you can put it in your back pocket, but it's also small enough to where you can put it in your coat pocket or you can put it in your front pocket and it doesn't feel awkward or weird, you know, so minimalist wise. But today, let's get this kicked off um, and the doing the arrowhead pattern with the X534. Now, again, with this tool, I also have three different size uh, basket weave tools 
that I use for three different purposes of reasoning. You know, uh, it just depends. And I'm actually working on a smaller basket weave stamp um, that's smaller than this one, exclusively for doing the minimalist wallets because it makes the work. It, it doesn't fill up so much space and it gives me a little bit more creativity and room to work with. So let's get off into this. I'm gonna go ahead and case my leather uh, real quick. Now, this, if you guys can see that, that little shine that's on there, this has already been resisted three times already. And the reason why I resisted, re, I don't know if resisted it, that's not a good word to use. Okay, I've already done the resist, resisting um, and the reason being for that is when I get ready to antique this, I want my antique to actually go down into the impressions of my tool and stay there. So when I get ready to wipe that off, then the non tooled part will actually make that really, really pop. It'll make it really shine through and, and come through. I did the same thing with the, uh, the, uh, native border. Uh, the native uh, aboriginal people of this country's border. So it is going to do the same thing inside of those impressions there. So when I wipe that clean, this part will stay that natural leather color as well as the outside part. So let's get the cracking. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I should have resisted this while I was talking or cased it while I was talking to you guys. And, uh, but when you have, when you do work like that to where you have already resist the outside part, you want to spray your water on the interior part. It's still going to absorb through to where you can work with it, now, uh, where you can do your tooling work. And it will actually turn out pretty good. Now, let me get this camera angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. And, oh man, oh, that's water. Okay, so not a problem on that. Now, what I did first was, uh, like I guys, like I told you guys already, this is um, three and a half inches wide. So I have already marked off my 1.75. Half of three and a half is 1.75. I made me two nice little, uh, just little marks there, and then I took my my pencil and. This pencil that I'm using is actually the arts and craft drawing pencil. Um, it's not a number two lead, so it's very, uh, it's not, it won't leave that lead pencil mark in there. And then too, on top of that, I'm just only going to lightly glide my pencil over the top of this. I just want to see a mark just enough for me to see it. Now you guys might can't see it out there in, in YouTube world, but I can. And you can buy these pencils by the boxes at Dollar General. or No, not Dollar General. Drop Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree actually has artist pencils. Artist pencils. You can buy a box of, of 12, I think, for a dollar. And they come in very handy, especially when you're doing uh, Sheridan work or any types of drawing on paper. It erases very easily, not unlike uh, number two pencils. So... Now, I got my mark on here, and we're at the 13-minute mark. God, lead time flies. But the trick here's the trick to doing the, um, the arrowhead stamp with the basket weaves uh, X534. The first thing you want to do is, let me get this work out the way right here. Uh, the first thing you want to do is your line that you're drawn, you want to split this tool down the middle of that line. And you want to put it right there. And you just want to make a little impression. Not seriously. Not You don't want to mark it, but you want to just have a little impression for you to see. And the key point to that is I'm going to take my tool. It's going to tell me how far my tool, how far I want to spread my my, my tool apart. So, because I'm going to match again, just like we did with the other basket weave stamp, I'm going to match this up again here, and I'm going to tilt the top part toward my line. So, you should have, your tool should be set like this. 
side kind of at a at a, a TP type and angle. All right, so let's get cracking right here real quick. And I'm going to stamp that in there real good. I think I'm going to go to my lighter mallet. Uh, and then I'll get off into showing you guys about these two, making your own mallets. You know how you can save that 15 and 20 bucks, $27 in some cases, uh, and, and make your own mallets. That's a separate video. All right. Now, we're good here. This is our start. You should start this way. Just like that. Now, the trick to here is I'm going to line my leg up again. Just like this. So actually what I did, I, I went to the outside of my first stamp, to the inside of my new stamp, and I turned it straight toward my marking. And then we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. And we're going to match these points up. Just like that. Take your time before you commit. Make sure that your points connect. And make sure that everything touches the line. You don't have to be in a hurry doing the arrowhead stamp. It's a very beautiful stamping work once you get the basics of it down and you can apply this to any any artwork that you're doing or any piece that you're doing be it a belt a minimalist wallet a wallet or a purse you know now nobody wants to do a whole bunch of stamping like that on a belt so you might can uh, incorporate that um in a different way and I'll show you guys how to do that uh, where you can incorporate the basket uh, the arrowhead stamp as well as with other stamps to take away from so much of this stamping make sure that everything lines up before you guys actually start to hit And you can see, even from just doing this on the video, is it's a very time-consuming job, and I'm constantly turning my piece to where I can see what I'm doing. Because, like I said, if you get off one little bit, it can be a major part in another place on your piece. So you definitely want to make sure that everything lines up and stays lined up. Just a little bit can make a big difference somewhere else. Can make a huge difference somewhere else. Now, as you guys can see, I'm here at the end part of this. So what I'm going to do to keep from going into my border up here at the top, let me back that up, to keep from going up here in my border, I'm going to lean, lean my tool in a little bit just so I can complete that stamp work there. And then it's a light impression on this side so it fades into my border. Uh, you guys can see that. See, I just leaned it. It's not as deep as the rest because I leaned that tool a little bit just to raise it up off the leather. And it's enough to and give it an impression. I'm going to do the exact same side to the opposite side. So it fades. It fades into my border stamp without leaving another leg. Now, your work should look just like this. This is the start. <coughs> now we're going to go right back down the other side and we do the exact same thing with this stamp. So I'm going to go right here. I want to give this, it should line up just right 
to where it gives me the right pitch. I'm going to mark that off again. And let me see. Let me get a little. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to mark that just to make sure that that's going to line up with that one. Perfect. Same thing. Just going to lean that tool in. And I'm going to come right back down the side. Now, the thing with this is, what I would suggest is don't go, once you got your middle down, don't go here and then stamp here and then go crisscross all the way up. Work one side and then come back down the other side. It's only going to be beneficial for you and it minimalizes mishaps and problems. And you want to make sure that you line these legs up and put your points together to where it'll stay exactly where you want to. Now, once you got the middle pretty much down, everything else should match up and you can speed up work just a little bit, but stay cognizant of what you're doing so you don't make any mistakes. Again, if you miss one of the points and if your stamp is off in one place, it's going to throw it off somewhere else. And the same thing when I get to this end, I just lean my tool in a little bit. And now I'm going to go right back up this side here with this one. I'm going to mark this to where my tool would be. I'm going to come right back here with it. I'm going to lean it the opposite direction and make sure I get my impression good and deep. And I'm just going to keep stamping. Now, whatever way is best for you to see the work, move your leather. Don't make it hard for yourself by trying to see uh, by me stamping right hand. I'm actually left handed. So it'll be hard for me to go this way because I can't see where I'm stamping. So I turn my work just the same as I was telling you guys to where I can see where I'm matching up my stamps. That's the crucial part. And take your time, match your points. That is the key thing to the arrowhead design is making sure that those points match up. Very, very important. Can't stress that enough. Is making sure that those points match. Because it can throw your work off. Now, there is a way to do it to where you can bounce back. But if a person is really, really looking at it, they'll find it. Now, here's the thing. You say, now, here we go, and your work should look like this. The arrowhead design. Points are going up one way, down one way, and up another way. Now, here's the thing. You're going to say, well, what are we going to do about this channel over here, cowboy? You know, it's an unfinished work. Guess what? Here's where that leaning technique comes in handy. And we're going to lean it a little bit more than hard. And we're just going to stamp those lines in there and finish it off and let it fade into our other border. Just going to let it fade into the border. And you just want to go all the way up with it. You guys can see how I'm leaning this tool. That's what we want to do. Lean that. You want to get at least half of the impression of the basket weave. Or you're going to have to go back and find you a camouflaging tool that will accompany or match up and make it. You can finish it off that way. But I'm just going to lean that tool in. And now my edge is done and it's faded into my border. Ha! That's how we do that there. And again, I'm moving it to where I can see my work. I'm going to lean that in. Get me a little impression started. And I'm just going to tool it all the way up to the side. Just leaning my tool in. That's all I'm doing. And I'm not really hitting it hard because I just want to get that corner line down. 
to finish the arrowhead off. That's all I want to do is just finish that off. And I'm just leaning the tool. Leaning my tool. Now, and this is what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. The arrowhead design. Let me move this camera back up so you guys can see me. Ha! There you are. Okay, now, there it is there, the arrowhead design. Taking your time, making sure that the points match everywhere, all the way down. And it all starts from that center line that you draw from the very first. It doesn't matter what you, what pattern you're putting it with. If it's with a gun holster or a wallet, you always have to go in the middle of whatever piece that you're working and scribe that center line down there. Not scribe may be too hard, so I don't want you to translate scribing. Um, as a hard line. You just want to put a light line down the middle. Just big enough for you to see. Just big enough for you to see and then that'll get you a point. And then you'll take that all of the start. It started by turning the tool in half or, or horizontal on your work and finding the middle of the tool and you put that down first. Just an impression. Not a hard impression. You don't want to indent the leather because it'll show up in your finished piece. But you just want to put it on there and play around with that. Just get your piece of leather and just see how hard you can push it without actually indenting the leather, but leaving a mark. Or if it makes you even feel better, just take your pencil and draw you a light line right there. A light line and that'll give you, that'll give you your same start. And then you can start off with your arrowhead design. And it, that's the flow of it, is to get each one of these rows going a different way. And I think this is going to be very, very popular. Uh, or, or I think it's a hot look because it goes right in Arrowhead Design, Native Border. See what I'm saying? And it's all done. Oh, and let me show uh, Man, I'll save that for another video about how we get that Native uh, Design done because that is done with this tool here. This tool here done that. And again, using your tools for not what they were designed to do. Now, even though this is a border tool, and I'll go into that when I get ready to show you how to do that, because you can do the same thing with your meander tools, which are border tools as well, and you can still stick and stay with that, that native feeling or the Aztec uh, design it just depends on really where you are so uh, and that's getting off into different parts of the country if you're around the Texas Phoenix uh, Southern California area you'll start seeing a lot of a lot of those Aztec borders in those crafters work you know and now you get up around Montana and Wyoming uh, uh, your Idaho's your Oregon's uh, your Nebraska's up there in, in, in those mountains up there, then you start seeing a lot of your native uh, borders and the influence it, 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 from, from those particular crafters. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters, signing off with another one. Thank you guys for chilling with me, and I'll be back again with another video, knowing your tools and what your tools can do for you, and you can do so much. Now, just these past three videos, uh, the one, the very first one was doing the slanted or angle um, basket weave design, and then we went to the doing geometric shapes with a basket weave tool, to doing the arrowhead design with the exact same tool. So that right there, boys and girls, that's three different patterns you guys have for the free right there and you can implement those in multiple pieces in multiple pieces and just to master that you can build a big name for yourself uh, in this leather crafting industry or if you're going to go into business and you can definitely be known for that now the thing with what i love about stamp work is nobody can patent the arrowhead design 
Nobody can. Nobody can patent the Arrowhead 2, or, or not the Arrowhead 2, or nobody can patent the uh, the Dragon Scale 2 uh, or, or that's used with the uh, Vayner. Nobody can patent that. Why? Because all leather crafters basically have, you get those eight stamps in the beginner's stamp kit. Yes. Those are your basic stamps. If you can look on Tandy's website and just look up basic leather kit, you will see those eight tools. And when and, and that's how it started because crafters back in the days didn't have a lot of money to buy tools. So either A, they made their own tools, which that's another video, by just using a regular uh, uh, three, three and a half inch bolt. You can make your own with, with a vice grip uh, uh, not a vice grip, but a, a, a vice clamp and a hacksaw. Oh, yeah. That's another video. Especially like, you know, or when you're in an area that you can't get to uh, a, a leather store or, or, or a leather supplier. Yeah, I know FedEx and the mailman ships all over the world and all that stuff, but sometimes you want to just be a little creative. And I'll show you how to do that in a di different video. Uh, how you can make your own stamps because just about everywhere, no matter how far in the country you are, you know, there's a hardware store somewhere that you can get to quicker than you can get to a leather supply store. And you can create and make your own tools simply out of a three and a half inch bolt. I'll show you guys that. But here we go. And then uh, today we capped off the third video with doing the arrowhead design. So there's three different designs. You guys are more than welcome. You know, Cowboy is not all one of these crafters that hang up on y'all stole my design. You know, nah, we don't bond like that. Each one teach one. That's how we keep this thing going and keeping the leather craft going too. It's a dying trade. Well, some people say trade. I say it's a craft. Uh, it's still either way it goes is dying. It's not too many of us out here, that, uh, and especially with the influx of iPhones and iPads and computers and all that stuff, children nowadays don't want to be creative with these. They want to sit there and do this all day. So hey, thank you guys for chilling with me these thirty-two minutes. Uh, this is Cowboy from Premier Leather Crafters. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.